He does, Brandon Heath, right here at Life FM. It's nine minutes after seven o'clock, and it is a Thursday. And on Thursday, we have the very, very wonderful, encouraging Dale Campbell, who's a prayer leader from the Auckland Church Network, in to unpack a Bible verse for us. In other words, say what? 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 Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> say what? Because sometimes you might be reading your Bible and you're going, yeah, I get that. I get that. Sometimes you might be reading your Bible and you see, oh, 1 Corinthians. I'm going to just bypass that because I don't understand that. Is that what you do? Sometimes. <laughs> I'm being honest. Sometimes yeah. I go, man, I go, I'm stuck on this, but it's too hard for me to understand. So this part of the show is where we get Dale in to unpack a verse for us and uh, give it to us straight and maybe give us other meanings that people might be struggling with. Mm. Or might have in their heads. Mm. So which one are we looking at this morning, Dave? Hey, good morning. Hey, yeah, mo- morning. hey sorry. No, no, morning, it's good morning, to be, my friend. <laughs> good to be here with two really Man. cool, uplifting, good people. Yeah, with a great radio show. We said before he came in, they all was very, very encouraging. Well, he just comes in cool. and he, he just compliments us. Seriously. He says we're doing a great job, makes us feel good. <sighs> I, you you know lots of people, man. You must I have, know you guys. You must uplift so many people when you're walking around town. <laughs> uh, Hey, you're making me look good, and so I'm getting, uncom- good. getting uncomfortable here. Hey, so today, yeah, um, in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of the New Testament, yes. right, in the middle of the book of First Corinthians, in the middle of chapter ten, and in the middle of verse thirteen, are these words. That's what we look at. It says, well, did, "Sorry, is sorry, there, is, there, is there a reason why you stressed in the middle? In the Cause middle, because it, it's not quoting the whole verse. Okay." It's just the middle of the verse. Okay. Ah. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about the rest okay. of the verse later, but go. it's just the middle of the verse. Okay. Cool. Sometimes you see in Bibles, they'll be like verse 10, 13, B. Yeah. Or something. B? That, that's what it means. They'll break up a verse into yeah. A, B, C, or whatever. Yeah, because oh, yeah, yeah. some and of those see verses are longer like, okay. than others. Yeah. So this yeah. is the B in okay. between the A and the C. <laughs> so it says, God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you were able Ooh. And, ah. so, and so, like, through some combination of, like, maybe we're not as familiar with the Bible, biblical illiteracy, maybe we're just a little bit forgetful, maybe the enemy actually loves to twist and distort Scripture, but for some reason, we get a verse like that, um, and, and it gets distorted, and there's this idea hanging around, God won't give you anything that you can't handle. God won't allow anything too bad to happen. He'll limit things that happen to you that you can handle. And it's just like, that's, that's actually not helpful. And it reminds me actually of Jesus in Luke 4 when he was tempted by the devil. Because I, I actually believe that's a satanic distortion of the Bible. When we get it wrong, we, 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 we distort it and misinterpret it. And Satan did that with Jesus in the temptation. He took him up to the top of the temple and he said, throw yourself down. Mm-hmm. And then he quotes the, 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 the devil, the, Satan. <laughs> he quotes the Bible and he quotes it in a very literalistic way. Psalm 91 is a beautiful prayer that Christians around the world sometimes use to close the day and God protect me through the night. You know, it's this beautiful prayer of protection. Um, But the devil quotes it to Jesus literally. No evil will befall you. He'll send his angels to lift you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And so it's kind of this demonic distortion. And it's a real problem because it's not biblical that nothing bad ever will happen to you. Mm. That is, it is so not biblical. John's gospel, Jesus says, in this world, you will have not comfort, luxury, protection from all evil, but trouble. You'll have trouble. Take heart, though, I've overcome the world. So it's not biblical. And it's also not pastoral, you know, because people, when they go through problems or bad things happen to them, they think, well, I thought, you know, God was supposed to protect me. Why is this happening to me? And so we have to go to the context. We have to go back to this letter What's going on? What's actually being said? Well, let's look at the rest of the verse. Uh, it's, it, there's this Corinthian church, you know, first century, um, dominated by sort of Greek culture. They're influenced by that. You know, they're, Christians think that they can sort of be a Jesus person and go to the pagan temples and participate not only in the temple worship, but also the temple gluttonous meals and the after parties, which often involve various kinds of sexual or immorality. And so there's this, right in the context, a few verses earlier, Paul is talking about this, this concept. The original word is actually pornea. And so you can see how our modern word pornography or porn comes from this, this word that's often translated sexual immorality. Okay. And so Paul is saying, as followers of Jesus, this is not 
what we aim at. This is not what we do. Um, this, is, this is unhelpful. This is destructive. And so, yeah, that's the context in the Corinthians. And it makes me think like now in our culture, we've got a lots of different challenges that we face. We are also influenced by our culture, culture of consumerism. You know, social media, various types of behaviors, attention-seeking, the insecurity that can go from that. Um, we, we, we lust for influence and fame and power. And, of course, the old porneia has many forms today that can tempt Christians away. And so we got to read the whole verse. we got to understand what is, what, is that, what is Paul actually saying to the Corinthians and to us. And when I looked at it, I saw three things. It's, I saw, first of all, Paul says temptation is common to man. If you're tempted, it's not weird, you know, from the garden till to, to the second coming of Jesus, we're going to be tempted. And so it, temptation is common. Secondly, God is faithful. God provides his love, his presence, and, and, and other options other than temp temptation. And thirdly, it says you, so, so the first two, uh, temptation, common, yep. God, faithful, and you, it says, are able to escape it. Or endure it. What a cool thing. God provides the way out and the power. All we have to do is take the way out and, and lean on God for the power to endure and escape temptation. So this passage is not about the prevention of any possibility for pain. It's about the power to endure and escape the temptation to sin. Uh -huh. That's what it's about. Okay. So it's kind of yeah. addressing people that feel that yeah. they're doomed to their own weaknesses. In like, a way, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that absolutely. if they reach out to God, that, that yeah. he will help them yeah. have strength. It's kind of more about that. Because I've heard this verse being, it's often in, I've heard people use it uh, by saying, whenever something's, somebody's going through something really difficult, they're really struggling emotionally, somebody will say, don't worry, God yes. won't give you anything you can't handle. Is that... Is that an appropriate thing to say in a situation like that regarding that verse? Yeah, look, I, I, again, it's, 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 it's not about God making life as comfortable as possible for you because that's actually not going to make me more like Jesus. It's about a partnership with God, partnership with his power, acknowledging that we're his children, we get tempted, things happen, but there's always a way out. There's another option. That's, that's what God would say. I think a lot of people, including yeah. myself, yeah. Reference that verse the same way Tabs has just yeah. described it to you. Yeah. So there'll be an ah oh, moment with a lot of people listening right I now, which, so. is, which, no, I no, so. which is great. Yeah. Okay. So we do get led into temptation. Yeah. Right. For those of us who believe we follow Christ. Yeah. We look, let's all put up our hand. We say, yeah, yeah. we love God. Yeah. And we, lead, we get led into temptation. What about those who stay on that path and can't get a way out? Yeah. Man, it sounds sounds like addiction, eh? Like what you're talking about. I mean, like like you can be addicted to social media, you can be addicted to shopping, um, and, and so some. It's funny you can be you can be addicted to like say social media and and not feel much shame about it, you know. Yeah. But yeah. if there's other if there's other stuff you, you're you're wrestling with, you know, there can be a bit of shame with that. And um and I I I I think in some ways shame there's there's almost two types of shame. There's, there's a shame that is like a natural emotional grief when, I, when, when, when there's behavior that's, that's not right. Um, that there's, there's guilt and shame that, that's, that can almost be a helpful motivator. But then there's this, this, this unhelpful type of shame that is like, I'm bad. God would reject me. God does not love me. I'm, I'm stuck. I'm worthless. Uh, and that's not helpful. And I think... I think when we read, I mean, the Bible says lots of things. It, it has a challenging verse like this that says, don't commit sexual immorality. Look at the examples of, of what happened in the Old Testament. It's a pretty strong challenge. But the Bible also has really got these wonderful comforting verses. You know, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. You know, this, this, this is normal stuff. Yep. You know, this letter is written to a Corinthian church who says they're, they're full of all this stuff. This, people are going to the temple prostitutes. And, and Paul doesn't say, well, you're, not, you're, you're hopeless. There's no hope for you. You're, you're, God's kicking you out. He's saying he's warning them. If yep. Don't persist in this. This isn't turn away. Yeah. Come, back, come back to God, you know. If, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself and, and the truth is not in you. First John says... If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. So we're instructed to, to use all the resources that God gives us. 
Okay, what about practically for yeah. us, right? Yeah. Um, how can we practically apply the principles of 1 Corinthians? And okay, you've talked about relationships, obviously. Yeah. yeah. What about work environments? What yes. about your personal struggles? Totally. There's a couple of principles that I might share um, that I find helpful. Um, I find that if I focus on the problem, it gets bigger. It's, it's more of a worry, more of a stress. But if I focus on just being helpful to my family at home, to my coworkers and colleagues, it changes the framework. I don't have to sit there and be navel gaze and worry. And th- this, is what, this is the great thing about grace, the yeah. grace of God. This, this is like, it's like God actually is not surprised. Um, he, he knows us. He knows all of our sin. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Um, so that's not, this is the great thing about grace. It's this framework of sonship, adoption, and security. I don't have to just wallow a, around in pain and guilt and shame. I can actually make, keep short accounts with God, confess, admit it, and just focus on serving others. I think that's really, really helpful. And prayer, living a lifestyle of prayer, and not just prayer that's like happy, clappy stuff, but yeah. confession, yeah. forgiving others, the Lord's Prayer. You know, like, like praying these, using all these tools can really help us to pull, pull, let God pull us out of these ruts we can get stuck in. Man, who needs Bible college? <laughs> you know, you just got Dale. Stop it. Honestly, well, I, I recommend, recommend Bible college. It's really good. <laughs> it's really well, good. I don't need it if you're going to come yeah. in every Thursday. There's this one thing we, we want to wrap up here. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Cheers. Uh, one of our pastors mentioned this at, at a service. This is weeks ago, but it's just that rings true with what you're just saying. Mm-hmm. He says about not praying into the problem, yeah, but praying into the promise. That's right. Oh. Yeah, how good is that, eh? We're yeah. not denying that yeah. there's problems. No. But it's just we don't have to obsess over them, hey. And Amen. there is hope. Yeah. There's yeah. hope to be free yeah. from, from them. Amen. Come on. You're a wonderful man. I like you guys. <laughs> Keep see saying I mean? nice things about see, me. See what <laughs> I mean? You'll be back in next Thursday with the misheard lyrics of the Bible. Say what? Thanks, Dale. Thanks.